seven. You know what it do. You know what it do. You know what it do. I'm here. I'm here to talk my talk today. What it do, y'all, man? You already know, man. Another amazing episode. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. You already know the Phase on View podcast. Make sure you tap in. I got my brother here again. Let's go. I got my brother here again to pull up. My boy. My boy, Jace. Um, honestly, bro, we got good reviews on our, on our last pod together as well, too. Um, shout out to my Uncle George. A lot of people don't know my Uncle George, but shout out to him, George Faison, who also is a famous choreographer. But he gave good, great reviews on the podcast, bro. So, man, shout out shout out to you, bro. Shout out to us, man. Keep elevating in this space. We here, man. We here today. The Battle of the Beltway. The Battle of the Beltway, we here, man. We here, man. We haven't been this good since, bro. Ten years to me. Ten, ten, ten years. years. And then, honestly, if you look at, we talking about Clint Porter, Sean Taylor, uh, uh, Santana Moss era, that was a long time ago, bro. That, that was already, that was like 03, 04. So, oh, yeah, we had we had a lot to, and, I, and I'm a true diehard fan. I'm a true diehard fan. I come from the Patrick Ramsey days, bro. I come back from the Mark Burnell days, bro. Like, I go way back 99. Ever since I was born, bro, I was a Washington fan, so... Hey, look here. I'm I'm just happy that we finally got our quarterback, bro. We finally got our quarterback. We got us a franchise, ten to twelve year quarterback, and he putting the lead on notice right now, bro. Like shout out to him, shout yeah. out to our team, uh, offensive defense that is coming together, bro. New coaching staff, new regime. Um, it's honestly even if you from the DMV, you don't even like Washington, you can feel the energy shift, bro. And, and you know, yeah, you hey, feel I energy know, switch because yeah. he, he my, my brother, he a cowboy fan, and that's a lot of the DMV yeah, natives been coming out the woodwork and get people back going to games. Come on, bro. I live not too far from the stadium. There was a couple times where I could just ride right back. You can't even do that no mm. more. They got the beltway mm. back locked up, the exit you can't get Fact. off. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good energy, bro. We deserve we deserve this, bro. We deserve this, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. We deserve this moment right now because. Man. It's, it's, bro, it's been far too long. And then, honestly, it's good to see them actually competing with teams, bro. You feel me? Like, competing. And, and now, bro, honestly, they they scared. The NFC is scared because they're dominating games, bro. Yeah. They're dominating. And, the, and there's a lot of people that say who they playing. Regardless of anything you have, you come out there to win the game. They but, played against a full-power Joe Burrow who threw damn near come 400 on, bro. yards. And, again, I'm a hater. I want to try to be terrible my whole life. I don't feel like y'all deserve nothing, but I can't take away no credit because yeah. that boy out there working. He cooking, bro. That boy out there working. He cooking, bro. And it, it, just seeing it as a hater, it hurts your heart to see some of them throws. It, it shows you what a quarterback can do to an organization. Real yeah. quick, bro. A quarterback can change a whole organization. Yeah. And coaching, bro. Because the coaching staff, they dialing it up. I'm not going to lie. Even last year, Sam Howell wasn't a slouch. Right. Sam Howell mm-hmm. was leading in certain categories for a portion of the year. But even doing what he did, this is a different level. Mm-hmm. Like, You want to know how a, co- a coaching staff and a team is so important? Let's look at Baker Mayfield. Oh, let's look at Jared for Goff. Sure, for sure. Two, uh, I would say both. I would say both of them are in the top Shaking five to ten, top ten right now. It's yeah. quarterbacks. Look at Sam Darnold. Since since see that, I don't Come even on, understand bro. And they that. five and zero. Oh. I don't even understand coaching, that. bro. Coaching and then I don't putting understand. putting putting the uh, the players in the right place to to win. Position to win. I agree. You feel me? Like it's it's all about the system and coaching staff. When you get into especially the NFL, the Miko Ryan's another the, one, a, a great one. I the like Texans the when what they doing. And we honestly, bro, like we're in a we're in a stage right now. It's not the rebuild anymore. Like what Dan Quinn says, recalibrate. Because a lot of these teams now are recalibrating, bro. We didn't we went, we didn't see the uh, Tampa Bay, the Vikings. We didn't see us being successful the way we are right now, bro. We didn't see that the Texans two years ago, bro. That Dag O'Neill was 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 having a hard time to win a game. Shambles, yeah. So it shows you, bro, like a quarterback can change the whole culture. And Jaden Daniels versus Lamar, bro, is going to be one of the ones. I might uh, actually go to that game, bro. It's scary though, man, because I don't want to. I don't want to see what it's like if the Redskins win that game. If the who do they now? Man, shoot, I call them the Redskins. I'm gonna keep it tight. Like, that's that's what I grew up on. No offense fans, to anybody, man. but I don't want to see what it's like if they beat Lamar and them. Because I'm a I'm a Lamar. Like champion, I love me Lamar. too. Me too. And seeing the type of criticism that he gets for the level of play he's had for all these mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. even though I don't think that 
a loss to Jaden Daniels is a bad thing, and it, and it takes away anything from him. But I feel like there's always these analysts mm-hmm. and people looking for a way to chip away at Lamar's armor and say, see, look, he's not that good. Correct. Or look here, or he, he's a running back, or, you know, trying to show him. It's weird, bro. And look, let's let's talk about it. Call a spade a spade, bro. I love Lamar too. Seven touchdowns and about six to seven hundred yards against Josh Allen and against Joe Burrow back to back weeks. Belt. Belt. Straight to. Belt. Belt. And listen, I'm gonna say it. It's always this great white hope complex. Now, again, the quarterback position has historically been dominated by our white folks. Mm-hmm. You know, God bless that. Mm-hmm. But now, ever since Lamar has been in the league. There's always been these undertones of because of his success running the ball, mm-hmm. Lamar can't throw. Lamar was throwing for hundreds of yards in college. Facts. Facts. And every time outside of, I think it was that first playoff game, mm-hmm. where he was a rookie, he got thrust in there because I believe Flacco got hurt. Yep. I'm, and uh-huh. he didn't have uh-huh. a certain level of success. The next year's Lamar went out there and showed y'all, I'm that. And when the MVP. And they still talking about some. He don't know how to throw the ball. He didn't always have the weapons to throw it to. Mm -hmm. And even when he did start to get those pieces, uh, uh, Mark Andrews get hurt. Mm -hmm. But you see now, we got Likely. Mm -hmm. We got Zay. We slinging that fool's ball. And then... And we making it work. What, what it's hard to do, and why, why a lot of people are giving Jaden Daniels so much credit right now, similar to Lamar, is because how efficient they are. Oh, you, yeah. That's hard to do when you get in the NFL to be that efficient Throwing the ball, it doesn't matter because you have real defenses out here that what? that they not playing, bro. Then you got to think about it. These players that you facing run four twos, run four three fast, just like you, human, just like you. Oh yeah. So I've like, been reading coverages for the last ten years while you was in college. I've been reading grown man coverage. I'm prepared for that, and and I like the point you made about efficiency because I think that's a stat that gets kind of tricky sometimes because you might have a I'm a Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, my guy. Yeah, that's my that's guy like too. my blood brother. I really give him a knee if I had to. But there was a year where Patrick Mahomes, I want to say in six games, had like five or, five or six t- uh, interceptions. Mm-hmm. But when you look at the interceptions, four of them bounced off somebody's hands. Yep. So when you look at something like efficiency, sometimes you might have a, a quarterback who might have a high turnover rate. Or they might struggle. Like Lamar, he mm-hmm. had the bobble uh, snap. Mm-hmm. And they look at it. I'm like, oh, here he go again. Bruh, if he snapped the ball wrong. So, yes, it's going to look bad Correct. on my sheet. On my stat sheet, I did turn the ball over. Even some of those Josh Allen throws. Love Stephon Diggs. He's from here. Support him. Mm-hmm. You've seen the ball go between his hands, bounce off right. his hands. That's true. That's going to breed on the stat sheet mm-hmm. as an Another interception way. for the quarterback. That's true, too. But if I hit you in your hands... Mm-hmm. That's not on me. So when we look at the the conversation just around efficiency and stats and all that stuff, that's why, to me, Tom Brady is the GOAT, not because Tom Brady was the best quarterback, because we win. So when you think about what makes a quarterback really that, Joe Burrow, for as good as he is, he ain't beat Lamar. He's not better than Lamar. Josh Allen, for as great as he's been playing, Josh Allen been looking like the MVP. But he ran into that man out there in that purple and black. I agree, bro. I and agree. it got different. I'm with you. Throw all these yards you want. I'm with you. And I won. Th- and then to your point about Mahomes, like I'm talking about this season and talking about Lamar as far as how we look at him and how we critical of him. Mahomes, he knows how to win. So that that mm-hmm. is that right there, right there. And I he's one of the goats for sure already. But for sure, for sure. we have to we have to keep the playing field even because Patrick Mahomes has not been playing the best this year. But Lamar, as far as the stats-wise, if you far as how he's been playing, he's been playing the best football, probably top, uh, top five out of all these quarterbacks. I say him and Josh for sure. I would say him. I would say him. Him, Josh. If we're talking about just general right now, who the be- top five Don't quarterbacks? Say Sam Donald. It please. is. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It Don't is. J- it, Brother, please. It is Lamar. It is Josh Allen. It has been Sam Donald. It has been. Uh, it has been Jaden Daniels. It's been Baker Mayfield. It's been Jerry Goff. Those bake. right there have been the main Shake and bake. players that have been going so, crazy. But to me, though, ain't nobody better than Mahomes. Mahomes is still yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah. And I'm going to say sure. the reason why is because, like I said, the most important stat is winning. Yeah. And yep. what I realized, Mahomes became my favorite player when his first year, when Alex Smith got hurt, mm-hmm. he got in the game, and you're like, who the hell? Because I didn't watch him in college, so I didn't really know. 
when you saw him play, it's like this is electric. This is like watching a circus. The next year, he go, I think he throws for like 30 touchdowns. He had like 5,000 mm -hmm. yards or something stupid. Mm -hmm. But when you saw that, they didn't win that year. When you peel back the layers of what it takes to really be great, sometimes you can't be exciting. You have yeah, to be. Yep. If That's a good so point. That's a good point. When they played against the Eagles in the Super Bowl, I think Jalen Hurts had like 450 yards of total offense. Mm -hmm. I threw for a bunch of yards. I had a bunch of touchdowns. I ran for a couple yards. Patrick Mahomes didn't even have 200 yards. But I won because mm -hmm. every time they needed yep. me, I made the throws that matter. That's true. So – I think that's what it's been like for him, especially I think he gave an interview either uh, preseason or early on in the season where he talked about wanting to have fun again. But sometimes of having that fun, you might not win. Yeah, you got to substitute. And he's yep. realized the mission mm -hmm. of winning. And that's why, again, to give Jaden Daniels his credit again, him being as efficient as he is has been really important because when you look at the Joe Burrow game, Every time Joe Burrow, I'm got five touchdowns, 300-something mm -hmm. yards. It's not a lot of people who outlast that. Mm -hmm. But I made the throws when they counted. So forget however many throws. I think he only threw 21 of uh, 23 throws 21, in total. 21 out and of 23. I, yep. 21 of those were completions. Mm -hmm. I didn't need to throw 50 uh, passes like mm -hmm. some of these other teams. But when it mattered... Come on. And, and that's, that's what's making, making a difference, to your point. point. That's, that's what's making a difference. difference. He's, He's making the plays, plays when it matters, bro. bro. Yeah, for, for real, for real. For sure. I'm excited for this game because I think this is the game of the year right now, thus far. Lamar, please. We'll see. Y'all let, let us know who we got. You already know what I got. Washington versus, uh, you know, the Ravens, Battle of the Bellway. We shall see. We already got people talking trash. Um, so, man, let's let's talk about it. Let's 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 talk about music. Let's talk about music briefly. Um, I want I wanted to talk about this first because I wanted your point of view on it. And okay. um, we talked about a pre-pod, but um, this offset versus Cardi B situation, um, and, and respect to them because you know their relationship, and we and we're, and we're talking about them. But just just hey, to let it be known, they allowed us to be in the group chat. So I'm I want to speak on it because it doesn't just it's not just based on them. This is like real relationship stuff that we could talk about behind all of this. But Cardi B, um, she recently uh, went on IG Live. I think this was about a week or um, a week and a half ago, and she was she was freestyling. And then she started talking about Offset. They've had they've had their fair share of situations happen in the public eye. For sure. Um, and then I, in my in my view on it, like honestly, I just feel like a lot of these things should just be left in private. Mm -hmm. But since it happened, in my view on it, I feel like. I feel, I feel like, like both, both of them, them can can have a point in this, but I, I do feel for more for Cardi in this because she's been embarrassed, embarrassed publicly multiple times. Y'all are public figures. Um, to what we see, she has held him down. She is also Cardi B. You know what I'm saying? She's one of them ones. Offset is also one of them ones too. For sure. But it gets tricky. It's a little I, different. I put blame. I put blame. A little bit of blame on Cardi B for an, I would say enabling the behavior for him to. Continue to continue to cheat and do things in your face, and then also on the other side too, we're, we're all saying, and with a lot of men, when we have pride and ego, we do something wrong. But if that woman does the same thing, it's, we look at it, we look at it in a total different light. So I wanted to ask you this question: Was she wrong for responding to Offset with the with the I you know wish? When she was pregnant, she was and doing did. stuff with other men. And did. Well, she didn't confirm and she that. Said, and she said, and did. did but we don't know. We don't know, we though. Don't know. But I say this. I think that was the Megan Man. One of my favorite lines is from one of my favorite albums. Kendrick Lamar on Take Care had a line on Buried Alive where he said, you belong to the people when you outside. You belong to the people when you outside. Ooh. And I think one of the issues that just goes around with just like music culture now just music culture mm -hmm. is so much of what people buy into isn't the music it's the persona and mm -hmm. since so many people are buying into the persona people want to monetize off of that so i would say the reason why a lot of artists celebrities and so on and so forth do put so much of their business public even you could you can say podcasters or whoever mm -hmm. is because it's uh for lack of a better word it's low hanging fruit but it's easy because you're just giving them yourself. I don't have to apply any creativity. I could just give you my real life. Because we all got some board job that's going to happen in our life. Everybody relationship ain't going to be 100% good 100% of the mm -hmm. time. 
you might be beefing with your mother, your baby mother, mm -hmm. your brother, something. And if you can give that to the public in a way that people are going to keep are going to keep watching it, it makes it easy. So to your point about them almost letting us into the group chat, I think that Cardi B, before she was even a rapper on a serious level, mm -hmm. was popular she online was. She because was. she gave the people her. And I think that some of the relationship being the relationship issues being public is a byproduct of that. I don't necessarily like it because again, I'm I'm with you. I don't think people personal business should be out there for consumption. Mm -hmm. That's just my my thing. But if they're gonna give it to us, they're gonna give it to us. Now, whether or not she was right or wrong, I say this. I don't think it's ever smart to you can't trust somebody once you do them wrong. And the reason mm -hmm. why is because you never know if they're going to find out and what level they're willing to get some get back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once you do certain things to somebody, Facts. you, for me, you can never really trust them again because mm -hmm. you was wrong. Because if they decide to get their get back, some women might wake, might wake you up in the middle of the night and kill you in your sleep. Throw hot right. greets on you or whatever. Some might stab you up. Some might yeah. cut your brakes. Some might go mess with your best friend, your mm -hmm. father. But because you put them in a situation... Now, yeah, not, not saying that whatever their response is is justified, not justified. Mm -hmm. I'm just going by because of a person's response to whatever you did. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what you do, we don't know if that's going to be their response. So that's I can't necessarily too. say if you right or wrong, you the one jumped in alive and said mm -hmm. allegedly she did woo up the band. Right. She ain't say that. You the True. one put the True. you the one had True. these young women True. on on Instagram posting your DMs and all this stuff. And again, I don't know what's in your personal business. It could be for entertainment. It could not be. Yeah, I got children. But in terms of just a let me close up because I'm job ranting. But the, to the point of having children, I don't think that any parent in any situation should be publicly disrespecting their child's parent. It just don't. It, it's mm -hmm. never a good thing. It's never a good Even thing. Even if your father, your mother are the worst, trifling, most terrible person, mm -hmm. ultimately you're only going to end up hurting that kid because even if the, the other parent is trifling, that's still their parent. Mm -hmm. If your mother is this, mm -hmm. that's still that kid's mother. Right. If your father is this, that's still his father. And it's still a reflection of you based on how you react. Exactly. Exactly. And that's now true. you got other people looking at you like, man, your mother did that. Your father really did right. that. You got little kids out here who gonna be showing your yep. kid like, look, you see what your father said about you. You open the womb to, to to judgment at that point. Yeah, and and it's something that that type of embarrassment, embarrassment that you have at home, you can get away from. Mm -hmm. When you invite other people into it, now you have to constantly relive it and relive it and relive it in a way that it extends the life of the trauma. Like, damn, I could have got over this. Mm -hmm. Damn, I can't. And Where did I go? They and also. Like, Damn, Offset, you did that, Offset. What this situation showed me too, bro, is that the male ego sometimes, bro. Oh, you do. I, I'm just, I'm gonna just keep it a real, bro. We, we can't handle you. We can't like based on what we, we dish out. We can't handle it if it, if it was uh, back on us. Like for, for example, like we have this situation that's going on. I don't know if you heard about it, but like this was the content creator, and I seen this, bro. I was like shocked by this, bro. Content creator, her name is Amber. She was going live and she was talking about her uh, abusive relationship with her ex, mm -hmm. Lucas Cole, and mm. how he was he was threatening her life because he didn't uh, she didn't want to be with him because she, she basically caught him doing something wrong. You get what I'm saying? He was doing something bad, That's doing it. something wrong, um, and you know they didn't agree agree to things. So she was she went on a hiatus. and was trying to get away from him, like she was scared for her life. She kept going live because she was so scared. Mm -hmm. Come to find out. Um, she he was like chasing her and then he called her while he was chasing her and was just like forget it and then killed himself on the phone with her. Oh, he killed himself? He killed himself on the phone with her. I mean so, But I'm I'm saying that I'm saying but my, my problem with that I is I shouldn't be as cavalier. Yeah, yeah, but my, my, my problem with that is is just that off of your ego and your pride, you let yourself get to this certain point to where you're you're verbally and about to physically abuse this woman because she don't want to be with you based off of something that you did it's crazy bro it that is nah, crazy if you really think about it based off something you did Wait, take me back you want to yeah you want to react <laughs> yeah bro come on bro and you know like like and i think a lot of people have been there and don't want to admit it you've been there when it you is. when you when you love somebody you did something wrong you trying to get them back I get it. Don't but, leave. 
But this, this, that's yeah. that's traumatizing, and it goes to ego, bro. And it could yeah. be woman and a man, a woman and man, because th- that happens genuinely. You have people that yeah. really would sacrifice their own life or others' lives. We've seen too many situations where you have a man or a woman killing one another because yeah, like, you know what I'm saying because of uh, because of a situation. And then come to find out, uh, they look through his phone after the fact. I don't know if this is alleged, but they they was like he was cheating. So it's like, bro, it's like you crashed out and did all of, all of this based off your ego and pride because you did something wrong. But this is my thing. Uh, I'm going to be honest. If I was on that phone, I would say, whew. Because like you said, it's too many times where they come kill you. Like, oh, I, that's true, I didn't too. hear about this before the mm-hmm. notes that you gave me about it. So I didn't know about this situation. Mm-hmm. When you're telling the story, I'm thinking we're leading up to he killed her. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, here That's come why you're saying, yeah, thank God. I, like, I was a little bit worried, like, right. damn, another one of these. Things. I would much rather. I know people have their, their uh, views on suicide and all that. I personally don't think that that should be as common as it is. I don't mm-hmm. think people should mm-hmm. resort to that as common as they mm-hmm. do. But if the option is between you killing somebody else and you killing yourself, Go ahead, knock yourself off. Why you gotta make somebody else suffer yeah, fast. because of your own? Family? And I feel like that's the most cowardly thing, bro. When people yeah. when people do mass destruction type of things and kill and kill people and then kill themselves, bro. That's the most cowardly thing to unless, ever do, bro. Unless. You was on FanDuel and one of your uh, legs messed up your whole poly. I can understand. I'm not saying it's right, but I can see why a nigga would lose it. Listen, 17 legs yesterday. 16 of them went through. And then you get that one, bro. Don't get me started. I was in the house. But to your point, though, about the pride and the ego and the way men express their feelings, I definitely feel like there are so many men, especially, but it is also a women issue, who feel entitled to their partners. Mm-hmm. And because you feel entitled to your partner, you don't even view them as an individual. You view them as an extension of yourself. So you don't view yourself cheating as that big of a deal because mm-hmm. it's almost like I can do this because you're just a part of me. Your feelings are a byproduct of my feelings. You don't even have no real feelings. And I I don't think a lot of people recognize that Mm -hmm. about themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't even think about it on that level. Mm -hmm. But that's when you use that language like, and this is something that is shameless plug. I wrote about in my book where Mm -hmm. people will talk about, uh, I can't see myself without you. I can't live Mm. without you. And it sounds good because, you know, romantic romantic expression, that extremism of, oh, they love me Mm -hmm. so much they can't Mm -hmm. live without me. But really think about what that means. I'm not even willing to recognize that our situation might be better if we change. Mm. Our, our, we might need to separate and figure some things out. We're not even willing to get to that point. So even if we are messed up, we're not good together. We're traumatizing each other. We might be abusive to each other. Mm-hmm. We're not working towards a common future. I'm still not willing to let this go. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to stay with you. And that right there, that can't be love. Yep. And that's that can't be you recognizing me that's as an right. individual. That's only about your own ego, your own uh, feelings. Mm-hmm. And if you are only thinking about you in that situation, how can you say you love me? Mm. So, again, when you run into those instances, it's a lot of people. That's real, it's bro. It's a lot of men who operate like that. That's real. And I don't want nobody out here killing themselves because for me personally, like you said, we'd have all been down bad. I thought about this one day vividly. I remember the thought. And I'm like... I'm going to kill myself and she going to go on living life and join with other, mm-hmm. other men. No, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to live my life and I'm going to be great. And you won't have to see me be great. You think mm-hmm. I'm going to die and you all get having fun see? doing it up on trips? Yeah. No. And then, and then it get, it break. I'm going to get some trips. And But like what you said is powerful, bro, because all that has a lot to do with self. Yeah. You feel me? And that, that goes into that talking point of. Not, not, not going into, uh, not having trauma, like had you having trauma and then going into relationship building more trauma. Yeah, <laughs> you feel real. me? Like, and then that just continues a vicious cycle, bro. Yeah. If you're not good with yourself, bro, mm-hmm. be by yourself. Yeah. You feel me? For Don't sure. drag me down into some other type of stuff. Cause I, the reason why I was upset with this yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that you said it cause I ain't even look at from that point of view. I'm just mad at the fact that you call me telling me you're going to do that. And then you really did that on phone with me. That's traumatic, bro. Like now, like honestly, that's hard for you to even move forward. Yes, you're yeah. safe, 
but also it's still traumatic. It's like, dang, I was with this person at the time. Bro, I could have caught a case. Remember, she a couple years ago caught a case because her ex told her she he was going to kill herself. Mm-hmm. She was on the phone. He did it. She caught a case off of that. Because I, I guess it would have to be one of those situations why he didn't report it, whatever, whatever, oh. try to intervene. So you could have got me locked up because you were crashed out. Yeah, put me in the situation. Yeah, but and then, and then they speculate you probably got something to do with it. But, and and I, I also want to throw this piece in. I think we do ourselves a disservice by not viewing our partners as individuals because when you really do take the time, whether it's a romantic partner, family, or whoever, mm-hmm. when you recognize the differences that we all have, mm-hmm. And you really pay attention to what complements that relationship. So it's certain things that your partner might be great at or uh, knowledgeable, knowledgeable about that you aren't. But because you're only considering yourself, you want to keep telling them everything. You're not being considerate of how they feel. You don't want to let them play the music in the car. They can't never pick the show. It always got to be you to pick mm-hmm. the show. They can't pick the restaurant. And it mm-hmm. seems like small stuff. But in that, you are not getting new experiences Mm -hmm. that can benefit you both because you're so much in your own head. You want to run everything. Everything is about you. So now there might have been a a, a recipe that she was going to turn up, but you too busy want to eat your mother roast beef. No, make it like my mother made Mm -hmm. it. She might have threw some some, some special stuff in a taco (laughs) and now you loving it. But you don't get that because you're not viewing that partner as a person. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. That's real, real talk, talk, bro. That's, That's real talk. talk. And, and then we speaking, speaking about, about relationships. relationships um, DDG, he has had, <laughs> well, he has had a week, bro. It's a, he has a week, bro. It's been it's been a lot of news going on behind DDG. Free DDG from Joe Button from his comments about the nine to five job from him uh, from his breakup with uh, Holly. Uh, head, uh, Haley. Holly. We did it. It's Haley. Haley. All right. I want. We want to make sure we saying her name right. Shout out there. Um, Little Mermaid. Because she. Do we were saying that. Does she, she say it like Holly Berry? Like Holly? I, I think, think it might be Holly. I don't know. Uh, it's Haley or Holly? It's Haley. Boy, I just got the video up. Right yeah, now. yeah. Like, let's pull it up, bro. Hold it, up. We, we we don't, don't want to mess her name up because right I know a, a lot of them been messing up her name. Now I think I think this is a good due diligence, bro. I don't know why it is so hard for us. Appreciate you asking right. because so many people don't know how to pronounce it correctly. It's literally just Hallie. Just Hallie. It's simple. Just Hallie. Shout out to you, Hallie. Right. And I want to be the next Lord Mermaid. Yeah, shout out to you, Hallie. Let me be a shock or something. Because she, she's fine. amazing, amazing talent, bro. Amazing talent. I really, I've, I've seen her and Chloe's journey for a good minute now, sure. and they're talented. Um, DDG, bro, I do feel like it's a lot of disrespect coming his way, but if I'm being honest, bro, I got hip to DDG probably about a couple years back, Mm -hmm. but like, what I respect about him the most is that he's paved the way, not only for content creators, but for, he's been prime representation of how you should do certain things as far as the content creation and bringing your family along. I know he Mm -hmm. does a lot of like trolling type of videos, type of vlogs, and that's how his personality is, but I do want to show him his respect in, in that regard. Um... And then he made this comment, bro. I wanted to ask you what you thought about the comment. Um, he said, nine to five jobs should only be used to start your own business. Agree or disagree with to that? I totally disagree with that. I disagree but with that, too. I'm also biased because I love a nine to five. I, I think the sentiment that he might have been trying to convey is a lot of the jobs that most people have, because mm-hmm. if we just go by general, most people are not making 100000 and up. Most people are somewhere mm-hmm. 75 and lower. And because of mm-hmm. that, you're going to need additional streams of income in order to have a certain quality of life. Correct. Now, if you find what, you know, check the check in it, not really having some of the luxurious aspects of the world, then cool. But I, I imagine his sentiment, because I didn't necessarily mm-hmm. see the clip, is in order to have a certain quality of life, whether it's having a, a nicer vehicle, having a certain size home, being able to go on vacations, taking care of your kids and having longevity, I imagine that that might be a sentiment. And because of that, Mm -hmm. you might need to have additional streams of income in order to support yourself in that way. So if that's where he going with it, then I'm I'm, I'm with him. And I think the key part about this, that's why I kind of, it's like I was split between this because I agree in the standpoint of myself because I'm creating my own business. Right. So I like, you know, I love, I love my job, but Mm -hmm. also I do, I do, uh, do use my job income to help my business in some type of way. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I understand it from that lens, but the key word is start your own business. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't want their own business. Everybody is not supposed to be an entrepreneur. And if we want to be real, bro, you see the people that out here and we encourage them and try and, and, and do it. We see a lot of people doing it 
the wrong way. You feel me? And that's just that's just reality. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is not meant to be a business owner or an entrepreneur. But what I do think in this essence is yes, trying to save up to have some income so you can put it elsewhere, whatever that income may may be, uh, from your nine to five and putting it elsewhere. I just don't like honestly. Just recently, of uh, I, I know uh, B Simone has said it uh, years back, but like I just don't like the narrative about nine to fives because it's just like sure. I, I don't I don't understand the narrative. And that goes to the conversation I was going to talk about today with the port workers, bro. I respect every single body's job because sure. it's what keeps our world going round, bro. Like, sure. if you don't have these certain type of jobs, you will understand how pivotal they are. But yeah. port workers, their strike alone for two days, bro, we lost $15 billion. Sheesh. $15 billion. <laughs> think of, think about all the goods and services and what gets shipped out, what comes in. Supply and demand with with goes uh, was exported was imported. All these things matter in our everyday lives that we don't see. Can I can I say this though real quick? And that I don't even care if this is disrespectful. I feel like a lot of people are dumb, and I say this because some people are legitimately out of touch. So mm -hmm. maybe I I don't know B Simone. I never I ain't see that clip. But if she mm -hmm. said that, she might be wilding. I think some of the people who exist in like a content space. Or just an entertainment space go into it as so young or so early on they don't really understand the full scope of what a nine-to-five can provide so you're lacking mm, some perspective mm. they might only know people who have entry-level jobs or maybe lower level customer service or just ordinary jobs that might be in that mm -hmm. 50,000 60,000 range which again depending on where you are depending on what supports and uh, partner you might have you could make a lot shake with 50000 mm -hmm. depending on where your, your expenses are. But for some other people who are witnessing somebody maybe make 50000 in a night, that looks like crumbs. And because mm -hmm. you lack that perspective and you might not realize that most of the country mm -hmm. are living exactly. a life it's, on this. It's amount. like out of touch, bro. Yeah. You look at a nine to five like, how could you bum ass niggas work for and, and make yeah, that? It's, it's a lot of people out of touch. Yeah. But you like that. And also, I want to say. Back to what I said at the beginning. People are dumb. People don't even realize how interwoven so many of the careers that we have are. Mm -hmm. Like you said, mm -hmm. the port workers. Somebody will look at somebody who uh, collects trash like, man, look at him. Or a plumber. Or an electrician. Uh, an esthetician. Let's, take it, let's give it to women too. An esthetician. Perfect. The Perfect. beauty industry is worth billions, billions. of dollars. Billions. But then they look at somebody who's doing eyelashes like, oh, she don't get a right. job. She lazy as hell. And, and look she at them like, like they're not, yeah, like, exactly, like they're not bringing in income. But you don't understand uh, a trash man makes over 75K. A UPS worker now makes, makes a, 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 a. And that was one of the things that he took pride in. He liked to, when there were workplace disputes, where there were people struggling with like figuring out their transition out of mm -hmm. the the government printing office that's something that he would assist with he would assist with like the legal issues and stuff like that my father loved that union mm -hmm. but you don't get that in some of the other spaces so a couple months ago when you seen like the waffle house and those workers striking or you would mm -hmm. see like the teachers and the walmarts and those uh industry striking and you wonder how can these people who give so much mm -hmm. even if you look at just mm -hmm. like somebody who do fast food or waffle house how essential fast food is to yes. everyday life yes. when the majority of americans aren't even cooking home uh home meals anymore mm -hmm. so you could say well damn why do he need to make such and such mm -hmm. well how many times in the month do you think you'd have been exactly. to the waffle house or exactly. to this restaurant i done spent a, an ungodly amount of money at the chick-fil-a yeah, for sure they getting rent payments out of me so who would mm -hmm. i to say i don't want them to make a certain amount of money especially when the cost of living is not going down. Correct. Inflation mm -hmm. is going platinum. Mm -hmm. Platinum. So, so these people need to be able to earn a livable wage. I think that uh, there's something that I read last year. I don't know if it's the same, but I imagine that it's worse. Mm -hmm. There is not a single state in the United States where minimum wage will allow you to be at a livable rank in that state. Not a single one. You cannot afford a single mm -hmm. family apartment. Um, single family single room apartment mm -hmm. on minimum wage in a single state in the entire country not one and it's crazy and bro. they worried about people shacking up and living with somebody man right. bring everybody and then my here. thing is you got honestly you got to get it how you live you for feel sure. me for like sure. you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do what's right for your family and what's available for uh, available around your areas for you to do 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even That's it doesn't matter where you have to start as long as you start. Mm-hmm. I would never want to demean anybody's job because all of their jobs matter, bro. All mm-hmm. of their jobs matter. If we think about it too, bro, and a lot of the things that uh, uh that's popular now and that's been popular for well, the last decade is online shopping. You sure. go online shopping, how do you think your products are getting to to you? For sure. Especially if they're overseas or not in, in the country, which a lot of cases that they are. For sure. How do you think that's happening? These are the poor workers that are actually doing doing this work for you to get your items, for get, for you to get your merchandise, for, that, for you to have a good a service. Yeah. All those things matter, bro. And a lot of businesses. We do a lot of trade, bro. That is what the foundation of our country, bro. Yeah. So imagine you don't have poor workers. Imagine how much money you're going to lose, bro. So, and, and I want to double back on a point that you made about just like the area that you work in mm-hmm. affecting like your mm-hmm. uh, career capabilities. I think it always goes down to what you value. So when you're picking whatever your career might be, mm-hmm. I know that because capitalism is what it is, we all want to work in fields that's going to generate us some money. Mm-hmm. But I think once you find something that you actually value, a career, a type of work, whatever it might be, then you're able to more effectively plan your life. So maybe your values don't really align with a particular mm-hmm. career. So you just get a job to make a couple dollars and you do that and you live the life that you want to live. But also, back again to that point of collective bargaining, once you really understand your value and you're locked in on that value and you're able to find like-minded people, you can get that collective bargaining. The reason why the port workers likely had to strike because I'm not fully uh, informed on it. I imagine that it has something to do with being undervalued by the superiors. So because, that we, because we've been undervalued, but we have this union, we're going to all get together because we recognize what we do. Y'all can't eat without us. Mm-hmm. And once we establish this is our value, we are not going to allow y'all to board job us. We're not going to allow y'all to underpay us. Y'all is just going to keep giving us scraps mm-hmm. while y'all are running it up. Like we've seen all throughout COVID. So many people were living off government assistance money. You People could say whatever they want about the PPPs and the, the 1,200 checks. A lot of the most rich Wealthy people in this country got a lot richer, a lot more wealthy when people was out here on government assistance money. So that lets you know some money was being made somewhere. For sure. So you think you about to come back and pay me the same when you done ran it up tenfold? And honestly, bro, no. with all this shows is that the people, we have a lot of the control. If you yeah. guys actually put your minds together. Mm-hmm. You have the control. One thing, important thing you kept saying is that the, a union. Mm-hmm. You create a union, you create a, a, a sense of togetherness and mm-hmm. come together for a common goal, bro. These things can happen, bro. Yeah. These things can happen. It just happened with UPS as well, too, bro. So, like, so you man, hear that DDG and Haley, Haley, y'all need to come back together. <laughs> we need more black families. Yeah, for sure, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Because I'm tired of seeing this, uh, the viral balloon challenge videos, bro. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck oh, with you, bro. I'm, I'm tired I'm of seeing it. it. And then, and then, honestly, bro, the, the last one I seen that that blew me, bro. Which one? My, my boy, he, my boy didn't even get a a word out. Everybody popped the balloon. Didn't get a word out. In, the the yeah, t- yeah, the shirt tucked in. I ain't uh, like uh, I guess like uh, what's it called, bro? I ain't gonna. He did look kind of lame. Because, I, you know, but, but my, if that's your but, style, that's your style. But that's but that's my problem though. You feel me? Everything, everything is not based off of, shouldn't be based off of looks. It shouldn't be based off of lust. It shouldn't be based off of appearance. It should be based off of who you are as a person, bro. Mm-hmm. And I understand it factors in, but this man, that's the problem too. This man doesn't look like you're, okay, the, uh, let's say, well, a lot of these uh, women are looking out here for uh, a, a, a good guy, a bad guy. Mm-hmm. So, so many different expectations. You don't even know nowadays, but my thing is, when he came in, he didn't even speak yet. Y'all popped the balloon, right? <laughs> then he then he spoke about what he does for the community, yeah. what he does as a work uh, for as his an job, animator, yeah. Like what he, what he wants in what, what, what he wants in life, what he wants in a woman. You know what I'm saying? It seems to be like he had a good head on his shoulders. And the thing about it was, it was all black women, and it's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But also, my problem is too is that how we how we pit ourselves against each other, and then. You have instances where, like, let's say the same dude get with a white woman. Then it's like, oh, bro. Well, I mean, what, what's going on with you? So I'm going to be honest. What's going on with you? What, what, they they yeah, pop that balloon in, in seconds, but, bro. Let's peel back the curtain, though, honestly. The type of person who would go on that type of platform, in my mind, you ain't looking for love. 
You ain't really looking for that because this whole thing is a fabrication Fair. for entertainment anyway. Fair too. So I like it because ultimately I view it through the lens of this is all entertainment. And if I viewed this as a serious, how could these black queens do this to this man? Look at this king. Why would they treat him like that? Then maybe I would take it a little bit more serious. But honestly, all of this... It's buffoonery. Like we we up here doing some nonsense for entertainment. So if they making it entertaining, definitely the name of yeah. content. So, but but also to your point about the way we disqualify people, I'm not even mad at that because I do feel like people are entitled to their preference. Now, allow me to be vulgar for a second. I made a decision back in 2017. Mm -hmm. I don't deal with girls who don't got no fat ass no more. I said, I'm not allowing no girl without no ass to stress me out. Because I went through a phase of these girls with no ass. And of course, they're beautiful people. Mm -hmm. But I'm not letting no girl with no ass stress me out. My life and has that's changed your preference. drastically. My life has been great since then. So again, mm -hmm. if I'm on that uh, same platform and somebody walk up with the chicken legs, you're getting a pie. I'm going like, right, yeah, I'm I'm to holler at you. Because you like what you like. I get it. I get it. But also too, it's like it's a it's, it's flip sides to it because you can like what you like for a, a certain amount of time, and honestly, if you look at the lens of things, and it's not working, then where else do you go? You feel me? Like in a sense where you're just looking at it off a of preference, off of the physical. You feel me? Like it's what you like regardless. Yeah. But it could be so many uh, missed opportunities that you're missing over here because you're not looking that way. You feel me? Based off of your preference. Because a lot, a lot of times, if I'm being, you know, just to play devil advocate, a lot of times our preference get us in trouble. That's a fact. <laughs> a lot of times our preference get us in trouble, and a lot of times our preference That's may not be for us. You feel me? So, like, but, but I say this in terms of... But the, you're right about the, uh, the, about the balloon challenge. Like, the preference conversation, entertainment. though, uh, when you think about uh, a lot of the conversations around, you know, some women just want to mess with the street guys and the ones who live a certain type of life. And they overlook the quote unquote good guys. Mm -hmm. Some of the time, some of the uh, things that I think about in that conversation are these women even worth the good guy that they might overlook? Because sometimes there might be mm. that guy, the quote unquote good guy, mm -hmm. and we might want her because she bad. She look great. Mm -hmm. She might, you know, you know, I put her little uh, baby hairs in a certain mm -hmm. way. She dressed good. It's like, damn, I want that. She looked like everything that God planned for me, mm -hmm. but she might be some shit. Mm -hmm. Like she might not mm -hmm. be a quality woman mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the men that might have uh, the quote unquote good girl mm -hmm. and you see they constantly dogging her out. They cheating on her and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man. But, but, and, and you talk to him, it's like, yeah, but she might be kind of boring. She ain't all that I want. She always, she don't really do too much. And you might look at that like, bro, that's a good girl. Right, facts. But it's you. Facts, dude. You're the one who does, doesn't necessarily that's deserve true, that person. That's so true, true. if these people are willing to allow some of the shallow things, like you said, mm -hmm. to disqualify people who actually might be quality, then to me, it's not a loss for either person because. That work, that woman or that man might not value mm -hmm. those quote unquote good qualities, and that person who isn't being valued, why would you want to mess with somebody who don't mess with you anyway? Who don't look at you? even if you like them? Why would you mm -hmm. want to mess with them? So you could always be in a situation where you're trying to prove yourself mm -hmm. and live up to somebody's expectation. I'm not doing yeah. that, man. Yeah. It's it's a lot of people out here. If you don't like me, somebody else. Facts. Will. Facts. That's and I might got to look a little harder. I might got to look at some unconventional places. I might mm -hmm. got to go to the library. I might got to go to the to the church house, wherever mm -hmm. it be. I might need to go stand outside of court and find me a lawyer. But I'm going to look, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hope that the person that I land with is going to value me, and not just because, you know, I got a good good, good little smile. Mm -hmm. And to your point, it always, to your point, it starts with self. <laughs> For sure. Regardless of anything, it starts with self. For sure. Because you're right. Your choices. Because I'm not going up there like the, the, the slave auction to be picked by these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like walking up there to, with their hands. I get what like, you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like, bro, I'm not doing that. That's true. And if I That's did true. do that, it is like, solely for entertainment. Right, I'm about to say in the name of entertainment. That's like trying to find a love of your life on reality TV. But I like the perspective you had on that. I even view it from that way. Like, as far as, like, we looking at stuff in, as far as entertainment, and you know what you're getting out of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't even take it serious. You got to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. That's true, too. That's true, too. Um, let's get out of here on this one. 
power finale. Power finale. Are 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 you disappointed? You happy? You excited? You sad? Man, how do you feel about the power finale? Um, and power ghost finale. Uh, specify that, but power ghost finale. Listen, I love black people, right? I do, but some of y'all need to go. Like Uma said, some of y'all got to go. Courtney Kemp, I cannot stand what Courtney Kemp has done to some of these characters. Now, I got a lot to say, so I ain't going to go on a rant too long. Okay. I'm going to just say for the finale, I was disappointed. I'll say more after my brother said his piece. All right, so he's disappointed. I felt like, honestly, bro, like for a minute, I, I would say for a minute, I, I did feel like the end was coming to, to, to the Power Go series. Just solely off the fact, it's like, where else can you go with the story? And then... Well, I didn't, it's entertainment, so I like the entertainment factor, I will say that, but it's so much fictional things going on, it's like, dang, it's not even, like, I know this is a show, I know it's not supposed to be a fiction, mm -hmm. you feel me, like, I know it's not supposed to be non-fictional, but like, dang, bro, make it, make it make sense, brother. so, but like, this finale, like, a lot of the things that happened in the finale, yes, it was, it was, it was good, I like how they, how they got Carter, I like how they got Noma at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? They did their thing. But it's just like, it, it was hilarious because it's like certain circumstances, bro. It's like, bro, how do we even get here? It's like, how do we even get here to, to Monet dying? Monet got see, shot. Monet got shot 85 times. And, and, and this the time that she died. Why is Monet like the only mother on the show to get killed? Monet and Noma. But Noma, don't, she don't really count to me. But all of these women on power, all of the moms on power are god awful. And most of them just got away scot free, while all of the fathers be getting spanked. Ghost got spanked. Tommy killed his father. Yep. Kanan just killed his father. Monet uh, killed the father. Monet killed the two fathers. She got two out fathers of out of here in the same uh, season. And then, and then I know this probably off top, but Zeke got popped. Yeah, but I ain't come on. I, I think it's time to tell her what I know. What on when I think about power to me. It went off the rails before we even got to Tariq. And there's so yeah, many. One yeah. of the things that I like so much about a snowfall, I like so much about The Wire, mm -hmm. is because they used layered storytelling. So you have, mm -hmm. in the beginning of The Wire, the first season, you already have the established drug uh, uh, syndicate. You got Avon. Mm -hmm. You got Stringer in them. The second season, they take a back seat. You do the port workers. Mm -hmm. Season after that, you start to see the downfall of Avon. You see the downfall mm -hmm. of Stringer. You mm -hmm. see the rise of Marlo. You're right. Yep. Then the season after that, you see the school kids. Yep. Snowfall. You see Franklin stop from a little crash out yep. who right. just got him a little pat. Mm -hmm. Him and Leon running around with uh, just trying to get mm -hmm. their little stuff off. And you see the layering built up. The shift in power was so breakneck fast. There was no reason for Tariq to be doing million dollar drug deals right. at 17. I'm not letting no 17 year old run my organization. I'm not. And then we go from Little Tariq, hey, what are you doing, Raina? So now he out here smoking for everybody, everybody, and then run and then running the same, they're running the same organization multiple times after he done got caught. The same type of system. It's right. like, bro, for me, for me personally, it's all been entertainment for me after season four and five. We talked about like of the original power after four and five. It's been nothing but entertainment. It just been okay, you know, it's, you know, something to watch. But to your point. What they are doing good uh, with power, that Canaan, yeah. boy, boy. But, but that goes to what you're saying. It started, it's like a storyline. Mm -hmm. And without the main storyline of ghosts, it when it when you go down the line, it kind of loses its, it, it's, 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 it it's, loses its muster. It's like, for real. No development for the majority of the characters. The only character that I feel like got genuine development throughout uh, book two power was Kane. We see Kane go from Monet's puppet, yeah. whatever mama tell That's me to do, I'm going to do, all the way to now I'm my own man and my mother got moved out of the way. Nobody else had that type of uh, development throughout the series. Tariq has been the guy the whole way, mm -hmm. even though you're just Tariq, bro. Right, like, facts. And, and I think the issue for me is it's so many little fixes that could have made this show good. In the same way how I talked about the layered storytelling of, like, The Wire. Why couldn't we just give Tariq a, a peel back? He didn't have to be a million-dollar dope dealer. Why couldn't we just spend more time with him doing the drug organization throughout school? We saw him setting up 
uh, we just selling hand to hand. Then we got the app. This season they had the the concerts. Why couldn't we see more of a fleshed out development of that? Why do we mm-hmm. have to have Tariq taking over the whole city? And then I would have liked to see him actually get out of school to see. And then I would have yeah. liked him to get that inheritance money to see what he would have did with. You know what I'm saying? It, it's so many different storylines. Um, I it's bittersweet for me because it is like an end to that. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I and honestly, this season was it had a lot of entertaining moments, but it's just like it's it became so fictional to me. It's just like that, bro. To me, uh. There's this book by Robert McKee. It's called Story. Now, I got to get in my, my English major bag. You know, I'm a writer. So, uh, in the book Story, Robert McKee talks about the way uh, creators start to use, a writer specifically, start to use aesthetic and spectacle when they don't have a good story. Mm-hmm. And that's, to me, what power, the, the this line of power is. Because I would say, like you said, Kanan, Kanan has genuine storytelling mm-hmm. being fleshed mm-hmm. out. We see development in Kanan. Whereas in OG power towards the end and in Tariq and even Tommy show Tommy mm-hmm. show is awful But you see so much of it leans in the spectacle We doing all of these gunfights and we busting guns and we shooting even like they have special effects now With they you seeing the blood splat mm-hmm. you didn't see that in the original yeah, power niggas don't even true. think about that That's true those choking niggas that's out true. your hand he's shooting it But you're not seeing blood shoot out mm-hmm. like a like a and we like that movie. more because it had a lot of storyline to it It exactly. had a lot of uh, development within the characters. Yeah, but they're using all of these flashy Everybody in the mirror outfits yeah, and Dior and we looking real good yeah. So it distracts us from the fact that the story is poor, but it doesn't even take that much because you were already given a strong foundation. And just to, to throw this wrench in there, Amari Hardwick talked about not being fairly compensated. Yeah, yeah he did. I feel, I don't want to cuss. I feel really messed up to know that y'all didn't pay Ghost, who was literally carrying OG power, yeah. just to pay Mary Gosh. J to wear all these good outfits for her to show two emotions through four <laughs> seasons. And I love Mary J. I, I want to wear love. Jay. But she's fact, on there terrible you, trash you speaking law method man on there just because he wanted just because all these women look at method man like a sex symbol y'all just got him folding up and then i and then i not even like how they switched his character because his character didn't and his character didn't start like that no they, they, they gonna sexualize his character yeah i was tight at the beginning of this year i'm like this not even how he was how he was even presented you feel yes. me like yeah it's like more and then to your point it's kind of like they got more into the the era of social media of trying to appease to like you said a certain aesthetic but not focusing on the storyline bro that's what bro i miss when we had the storyline of of uh ghost and tommy going against lobos and hat bro and yes. and then and right. then you had the tasha who's the, and angela who's the betrayer deliver. who's the we had a whole right, exactly, season of bro. who betrayed us exactly that le- and even to your point about lobos lobos was a op for at least two seasons, two or three seasons. Yes, every season of Power had a new op. Yes. Why is it a top nigga every new season? Right. That doesn't give us enough time to establish these people as threats. Mm-hmm. Noma just popped up. Out of nowhere. And then Carter popped up out of nowhere. Before that, uh, Slim, Zeke Father just popped up. Out of nowhere. You're right. But all three of them. We have no level of investment in no real state. Yeah. Like, we ain't even scared of these people. Man, you got four more episodes. You out mm-hmm. of here, champ. We don't got to worry about and you. You're right. And honestly, based off of how this season was going, like, the fact that it even ended like that still frustrated me. Because I'm like, it's not even technically an end. So now Tyreek about to go work with Tommy? Trash, you feel bro. Me, bro? Like, it's just like, that, yeah. this power has devolved into a bad soap opera. Yeah, and has, I bro. and I grew it up has. watching God and Light and all this, so I can see you got people popping back up from the grave. Yeah. You got all types of, but actually, she's my mom. Like, yeah. what are we doing, brother? Facts. Facts. What, what, what I do you knew Monet's not my mom, bro. I knew. Man, it was up. What are we doing? I knew it was up after after they uh after they killed Zeke, bro. Yeah, because I'm like, where I'm like, where else can you go with the story? Because honestly, if they, I, they, didn't, they didn't even even though. He brought a lot to the a lot to the show. No matter if they felt his character was good or not, because the development of his character, to him going to the league and getting them out there, they could have done so much with you know what I'm saying. Exactly how you you thinking? Because look at that angle that it gives you. We have if we want to keep the story contained on some teenagers, because really Ghost was about some teenagers drug dealing. We yep. could have the Tariq storylines at the school. Mm-hmm. We could also have we got this connection to Zeke. 
that could literally be an avenue for Tariq to make it out of the drug game exactly. or do something different. Mm-hmm. Plus, I got a mentor with Tate and I got Davis McLean. Mm-hmm. So now, instead of thinking about how I could sell more dope, how about I go learn how to do some, some law with Davis and then mm-hmm. I could be Zeke lawyer. And, and why I'm, we appreciate it goes so much as well too because he handled a business as well too. He had his own club. You, he yeah. was trying to be a, a, you know, a politician. He was doing other things. Even though it was sourced from this, but he played two different sides. Tariq yeah. just went straight into savage mode. We got ghosts starting from I just own one club to now my club got bought up to now I'm a part of a, a club organization. Then I got to compete with the club to now at the end, I'm the leader of all. I own a bunch of different clubs. Plus, I'm about to be the lieutenant governor. So you'll spoil your ass going to kill me in my own club. Yeah, I get. I gave my father a chance. Bro, hey, bro. It, it's it's fool, and I'd be mad at y'all for enjoying power. If you enjoy power, I don't like you. <laughs> it's something wrong with your brain. I don't care. That show is terrible, and yeah, there's bro. no way you watched the entire series from the start, and you could tell me that you yeah. enjoy this board job that they've been doing. It's, lately. it's just and, and how I view it. To your point, I just view it as entertainment at this point. Yeah, it, it it's really is. It really is. But it's, some, it's like you too deep. Like I'm gonna keep watching. Because I didn't invest it. It's cognitive dissonance. I didn't mm-hmm. put so much time in this. Yeah, fact. Now, now I got to see. I just got to see what yeah, they're doing. Yeah. And I'm going to keep complaining. And I'm going to keep slandering Courtney Kemp. Take her pen away. Get her out of here. You ruin Man, it. Man, I'm going like to shout, say shout out to her for the first five seasons, six seasons. But, yeah. And, but also, if she writing these other stories, if she writing Canaan, I right, look. Just keep doing that. Bruh. This yeah. isn't turned into some Tyler Perry nonsense. They yeah, it has, bro. And yeah. a matter of fact, Tyler Perry wouldn't even do no foolishness like what y'all doing. Kane didn't really walk down on Noma yeah, in front bro. of a whole hanger of police. Uh, and then just walked away. And got away. And then lived. Come on, bro. And then this Effie. This nigga turned then, into David Copperfield. Then Effie, as we talked about, Effie been a part of power for a long time. Now, all of a sudden, she gained a heart and talking about some, here, here you go. All the, mo- and all the money that I got... From school, all this money that I, I'm gonna give it to you, Kane, to you do know, nothing with bruh. it. Bruh. Effie, like we said, Effie been there Stop for since it. season four of the OG Power. That means she been in for at least six seasons, and the only development that we got is here. Here, Kane, take a couple dollars, and only backstory we get is we meet her mother for five minutes. Yeah, that was that was weird, bro. That was weird, bro. Power, that, weird. that show is terrible. 50 you would and, and I ain't gonna lie I love you 50 but I feel like you was hating because you seen how much people like the original power and you said no I'm gonna make my show better yeah, so you sabotage Tariq joint right. you sabotage Tommy joint and you made your joint powerful because they doing everything that you supposed to do they didn't yeah. develop they didn't got music yeah. business stuff going on in, in uh, Canaan mm-hmm. we didn't got the development rock taking up uh, the, the organization now she doing it with different players now she built we don't get none of that. Yeah, nah, that Canaan, bro. That raised Canaan. Hey, that coming out in the winter. Shout out to Fig by that. Because that junk, that's one I'm you, waiting you, for. You might, I want to be in something with you. I love you, 50. You, you might, but I feel like you was hating. But don't, you know, don't <laughs> drop no money on my head. I got a family. <laughs> hey, man, another amazing episode of the Phase On View podcast, man. Been an amazing episode, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Continue to support. Like, share, and subscribe. Hey, episode 47, tap in. Yes, sir. <laughs>